Welcome to the Greenville Farm. We're here standing in an alfalfa oat companion cropping plot where we're testing different oat rates and different water stress levels of the oat companion crop. Yeah, can you and hear that? It's a really interesting study and Yeah, yeah, it's quiet but I can hear it. Utah. Yeah. Use oat companion cropping when establishing alfalfa to control weeds and to boost their yields of their of their first year alfalfa stands. So this is a really interesting plot and I look forward to sharing it with you. This is the 80 pound oat rate and this is a pretty high rate for planting oats with alfalfa but it has been used in the past. This, this rate does yield the best as far as first year yields but the second cut yields are not that great and this year we have quite a few weeds, if you can tell in this, this plot, there are a lot of weeds. And when we look down then, this is the 100% irrigation level. And you'll be able to see a few alfalfa plants in there. Not very thick though, but they are there. And as we walk down this irrigation level, we'll see that the oats get shorter and a little more water stressed. and and there are still a few alfalfa plants in there and along with some weeds you can see some weeds in there as well but they're not as thick as they should be or they would be if if there were no oats there then as we continue down this is about a 25 percent irrigation level this is pretty low and you can tell that the oats and the alfalfa and the weeds are all stunted in this plot This is our dry land setting and you can tell that the alfalfa seedlings are, are very water stressed down there and that can be due on part to the fact that the oats are taking up some of the water and this, this is potentially pretty detrimental to the alfalfa stand in, in the future. This is the 10 pound rate. We skipped a few, we skipped through the 40 pound rate down here, and then the 20 pound rate, and this is the 10 pound rate. And this is a good one to look at because you can tell that there, there is some, some weeds that are growing in there. The alfalfa is obviously suppressed as well. It'll, it'll be hard to find some alfalfa in here. But there, there should be some. Okay, there's a few alfalfa plants growing in there. But the alfalfa is still suppressed at this level. The, um, the weeds aren't suppressed as well. But in past years, this has usually, the weeds have usually been suppressed around uh, 60% of what the control would be. But as we move down, here's the um, the 50% irrigation level. It doesn't look like it'll yield very well and there's quite a few weeds. Here's the 25% irrigation level and some of the alfalfa is growing a little better in this irrigation level. There's a little more room for it to grow and the oats are, aren't as tall. And here's our dry land setting. right here and nothing seems to grow well in the dry land but that's the way it goes here we have the weed free and untreated plots the weed free plot was achieved using 2,4-DB and clethodim to control the broadleaves and the grasses and it turned out pretty clean and uh, the alfalfa is growing very well in it if we walk towards the high irrigation level You'll notice there are a few weeds, the alfalfa is growing well, and it's looking really good. If you look over here, this is right next to it, also the high irrigation level. There are quite a few alfalfa plants growing in there, a little more than what you would see probably in the higher oat rates, but there are still a lot of weeds growing here. This is not what you want to see. This is really bad weed year. As we move down to 
our um, medium irrigation levels the alfalfa starts to grow a little shorter and the weeds weeds seem to stay the same similar weed co competition throughout here's the low irrigation level about 25 percent the alfalfa is still pretty short uh, in a normal setting this might yield uh, maybe a ton per acre in a single year and here the weeds have overtaken the alfalfa as well the alfalfa seems to grow a little better or at least you can see the alfalfa here last year we conducted the same study with similar results except for that there, there are far more weeds this year than there were last year and if you notice from this chart um, talking about stand density that the stems per square foot in the alfalfa that was planted with oats is way lower than than when oats when the alfalfa was planted alone and the stand density worsens as the rate increases this is the yield data from last year and from this chart kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and I decided to eat too many donuts and it seemed like a good idea at the time but later I regretted it and a farmer could regret this if he planted 80 pounds of oats per acre that eventually uh, that the farmer would realize that there's not very much alfalfa in there and it looks really great that you're getting almost five tons of yield per acre but when you look closer at it um, maybe reducing the oat rate or or going going with another another weed control alternative might be a better option however one thing to note is that the treatments of oats significantly reduce the amount of weeds that are grown in the plot now we've moved to the another alfalfa oat companion crop trial where we're testing different timings of herbicide application on the oats and the alfalfa. Um, the different timings were um, before the alfalfa emerged, when the oats emerged, uh, about 6 inches, 12 inches, uh, 18 inches, and then when the oats were um, headed out. So this is a pretty interesting trial. This is for probably mostly for people who want to control erosion but they still want to have the utility of, of the weed control when they're, pla when they're planting the oats. Okay we'll start with this plot. This was sprayed before the alfalfa emerged when the oats were about three inches tall and the weeds have come back so sometimes this may work if the weeds are already present before the alfalfa grows but usually that's not the case if we move over here this is a plot where the oats were killed when they were around nine inches tall and that's that's from the base of the stem to the to the tip of the leaf so the canopy would probably be about six inches tall and then if we move over here this is the 12 inch height and this is where the alfalfa really starts to get suppressed and then if we move over more we'll see this is where the 18 inch tall oats and there the alfalfa is in there but it, it is pretty suppressed and there will be a lot of corpses when it comes time to harvest in a week or two and then when the oats are headed out this is probably not a good idea but we included it anyways if we go over here this is where we didn't spray it at all and there are weeds and oats and alfalfa and everything sometimes so the alfalfa height on the on that far one would have been around three inches and here we would have been about six inches tall for the alfalfa but this alfalfa is growing way better than its counterpart with that was planted with oats and then I don't even know if it's worth talking about these guys because this is definitely not recommended to kill the oats at these rates and this is what happens when you kill out kill out the weeds when they're really tall and you can see that the alfalfa is stunted at this point 
when it's clear seeded and then the weeds are killed out later in maturity and this won't yield the greatest the quality will be pretty bad but at least the weeds will be dead we are here in western idaho in a farmer's field where we have done a similar trial to the one in logan where we have sprayed the alfalfa at different timings with glyphosate and we also sprayed the oats and we, we found some interesting things here a lot of them similar to what what they are in logan this is a plot where the alfalfa and the oats were planted together and the, and the oats were not sprayed at any time. And you can tell that there are very few alfalfa plants in here because the oats kind of drowned them out. And this is pretty typical for all oat alfalfa companion crops where they're drowned out. Move over here where the oats were sprayed at about nine inches tall then we notice quite a few more stems in the alfalfa field and it looks pretty good the yield on this is lower than the yield on alfalfa that that is grown alone but it still looks pretty good and it and it still looks like it's a valid way to to establish alfalfa this is a plot where the oats were terminated at a taller stage probably roughly around 12 to 15 inches tall and this is where the alfalfa starts to really lose its momentum if you can see here in this plot the alfalfa stand is pretty sparse there's a lot of empty spaces this will give a lot of room for weed growth in coming years and there will probably be some yield weed growth by the time we harvest second crop in this plot. This is a plot where the alfalfa was planted alone and it was sprayed at the earliest stage around three inches and if you look the stand is really good there's a lot of regrowth there's not a lot of places where the alfalfa didn't come up and we would consider this a very successful establishment stand. Here is some yield information from last year's herbicide application timing trial. And you'll notice pretty quickly that whenever oats are grown and then herbicide is applied to uh, kill the weeds and the oats, that you'll you'll receive a yield decrease and that becomes more severe as you let the oats mature so if you're going to attempt this then it's best to apply herbicides when the oats are short so that you can give the alfalfa the best opportunity to grow and, and produce